This story is part of the printed material from the project Studying Marine Litter in Latin America of Fondo Chile, implemented by Cientificos de la Basura between 2018 and 2020. Its aim is to motivate and encourage children to learn and participate in collaborative investigations around the problem of marine litter. The Sisterhood of the Turtles Sea turtles are very important to life in the ocean. Their survival is fundamental for the health and happiness of planet Earth. The first green sea turtle sister, Honu, arrives. She is extremely tired as she has traveled a very long way to get back to where she was born. Honu is a traveler, a globetrotter. She has traveled all over the Pacific, from island to island, and from current to current, exploring the wonders of the world. Next, Midas, Honu's sister, arrives for the gathering of the turtles. She is very special because she has lived for a long time in a marine reserve, a beautiful place that is protected from fishing and bursting with life. As they meet, the sisters give each other a turtle greeting. Then Midas asks, Can you see what I have on my back? The humans back home in the marine reserve put something there. Hmm, I don't know, but I've seen something similar on other animals during my travels, responds Honu. The turtles that manage to return to their birthplace are special. Many don't make it. They die on their journey as there are many obstacles in the sea, starting with predators on the nesting beaches when the turtles are first born. The sound of waves and the clattering of the ghost crabs are signs that the sisters have arrived at their birthplace. Do you hear that sound? It's calling us! It's the sound of the ghost crabs. Do you remember how difficult it was to leave the nest and escape the crabs to get into the water? Well, thanks to our sister, Katapata, we didn't become food for the bird, fish, or the crabs. The two sisters decide to explore the beach while waiting for their sister, Katapata, and the sun to set before starting to dig their nests. Eventually, Midas asks Hono. This seems like a good place to lay our eggs. But Karapara still hasn't arrived. What has happened to her? What should we do? Let's get back into the water. Tomorrow may be the moment we've been waiting for. There's still time for her to appear. At dawn, Midas and Honu are watching the sun rise and waiting in the middle of the bay. A cold current of water announces the arrival of another group of turtles. The sisters wait, eagerly watching the horizon for any sign of Karapara. Suddenly, they see something floating and drifting with the current in the distance. Curiously, the sisters move closer. The current carries along a motionless Karapara. As the sisters recognize her, they both shout, Karapara! What happened to you? What has happened to her? She's entangled, all wrapped up in fishing lines. And there's something in her nose. Could she have eaten plastic? Or maybe she was hit by a boat. Let's help her by pushing her to the shore. So she doesn't have to waste her energy swimming or floating anymore. The two turtles, worried about their injured sister, do their best to save her. A wave helps them to get out of the water. On the seashore, Hun and Midas observe their sister. They are wise and recognize what has happened. Midas cries in anguish. She has a plastic straw in her nose. Oh, she's barely breathing. Hun answers. There is an island in the middle of the Pacific called Rapa Nui, a place where currents in marine life meet. For more than 30 years, the ocean currents have carried lots of plastic there, from different countries and ships in the Pacific.
the animals in the marine reserve told me that our brother Juan drowned after getting trapped in fishing nets, together with a dolphin and millions of fish. Says Mida sadly. Since hearing that news, I've always stayed away from boats and fishing nets. Crying, Midas and Hon stay beside Karapara to keep her company while she is in pain. <laughs> it's midday, and the sun is blazing. The turtles stay with their injured sister. Meanwhile, scavengers fly over the beach. Suddenly, the turtles hear movements in the sand. Three humans are approaching. Hun and Midas decide to go back into the water, but first they gently whisper. We love you so much, Karapara. The humans take Karapara by the shell and carry her away. Midas and Hun watch in fear. The sisters return to the beach and Midas breaks the silence. A Galapagos shark from the reserve told me that some humans eat turtles and also shark fins in their soups. The two sisters look at each other and say at once, Turtle soup, poor Karapara. Frightened, the sisters wonder, What will the humans do to Karapara? Throughout my travels across the ocean, I've seen humans doing very bad things. For example, one of my favorite beaches in the Pacific was covered in cement and turned into a big noisy port where hundreds of ships pass through every day. Oh, listen to that deafening sound. In the middle of the Pacific, I saw how disoriented whales ended up stranded and dead on the beach. Explains Hun to Midas, dodging a jet ski. During the wait, the turtles feed, swim, and talk about how they can help their sister. Maybe they can help her escape. But Hoon and Midas know that humans are dangerous to all life in the ocean because of their noisy, destructive activities and their endless production of litter. Midas says, Yes, but Karapara isn't dead yet, and she must lay her eggs. She's already lost a lot of time, so maybe we shouldn't wait, answers Hoon, popping up to breathe. Midas and Hun know that they can't wait any longer and that the time has come to lay their eggs. The sisters are sad that Karapara can't take part in this important moment, but they must lay their eggs like their mother, their grandmothers, and all their ancestors did before them. The sisters will help to produce the new generations of sea turtles that will ensure the life and health of the ocean. Hun and Midas have found the best spot on the beach to lay their eggs. Careful and patient, they dig a big hole in the sand, neither too deep for the babies to climb to the surface, nor too shallow for them to be discovered and eaten by other animals. As the sisters lay their eggs, the moonlight shines brightly and illuminates them. Now the purpose of their journey has concluded, and their hard work has paid off. Happy to have met their goal, each sister laid 100 eggs on her nest in the sand. They are also grateful and relieved that they were not disturbed by birds, humans, or other animals while laying their eggs. Back in the ocean, the turtles speak about how they felt during their first nesting and how important it is for their species. Mida says, It was difficult, but we found the beach because we were guided back by the currents and winds. We're so lucky that the beach hasn't changed and that we were able to lay our eggs here. Hoon answers. Yes, we have made a great effort and succeeded. I hope that our babies will be able to live in an ocean without litter. After having laid their eggs, their journey is complete. So Hoon and Midas swim out toward the open ocean and the horizon to say goodbye. Suddenly, the sound of a boat startles them. The sisters dive a few meters deeper to observe the boat from below the surface. The boat stops suddenly, and Karapara is carefully dropped into the water. She is thinner, but she can breathe normally again. She has been freed of the plastic and fishing nets. Excitedly, Karapara feels the salt water kissing her skin between her scales. Breathing freely, 
She looks gratefully one last time at the humans. Then she dives down beneath the waves. Karapara swims happily toward her sisters. Amazed, Midas and Hun look at the silhouette that little by little turns into the form of Karapara. The sisters all reunite and swim in circles to celebrate their joy. Later, the sisters ask Karapara, Karapara, Karapara we, we thought, thought you would never, never return. return. Tell, Tell us, us what, what happened, happened to you. you. She happily replies, The humans removed the plastic from inside me. They put this mark on me. At first it bothered me, but now I'm barely feeling it. The humans also took a lot of photos of me. Then they brought me here to meet you. And your eggs? This season I won't be able to lay my eggs. But I'm very happy to see you again. Finally together, the three sisters are floating and talking in the middle of the bay. Katapara has a lot of stories to tell them about the humans. Like me, there were sea lions and birds, some wounded by boats, others orphaned or injured by the plastic. Do you think humans can be good? Yes, I think so. Some are hardworking and sensitive and dedicate their lives to studying the litter on the beaches. I even have seen that the humans have stopped using so many plastic bags. Hun and Midas listen attentively. Karapada's view of humans has changed. Hun asks, Do you think our situation will change? Humans can make big changes by working together. But if only one human doesn't respect their agreements, they all fail. For hours, Karapada tells them everything she knows about humans. At the horizon, the sun is setting and the three turtles swim out to sea. They arrive at the spot where the ocean current will separate them. Each turtle takes her own path, just like when they were young. Here, the sisters will separate once again to continue with their solitary lives. They put their fins together one last time and follow their favorite currents, excited for the adventures ahead. But this time, they'll swim more carefully. They hope that humans will be responsible. After all, the well-being of the ocean is necessary for the well-being of people. And three months later, the beach is bursting with life again. 